Hi, good afternoon. Um, before this lecture, um, I would like to thank you all of your attendance, especially today. Uh, I know it's very uh, not convenient uh, to come over without the uh, public transport. And so <laughs> in this to, uh, in today's event, um, firstly, we want to impress on um, um, the the 20th, 28th February instant um, happened in Taiwan or Bashbian. And uh, secondly, we'd like to acknowledge uh, the founding of the Taiwan newspaper, Taiwan People News. Uh, found, uh, it's a founding 100 years ago. And Guangwei and I um, just organized this talk about the two different uh, newspapers. Uh, Taiwan People News and the People News. Uh, there are two different newspapers. And uh, but both presenting uh, the press freedom uh, bravely during the their special term. And uh, we would like to introduce the process of uh, press uh, freedom or say uh, speech freedom um, challenge in Taiwan. Um, during the early and the middle the century, uh, 20th century. So, uh, so move on to my section to my section in order to yeah this one. Okay. So in order to correspond the current news in Europe, especially like today's strike, and uh, I'm going to show how Taiwan people news being established and the reported strikes, as well as the workers' voices under Japanese uh, rules in 1920s. And uh, there are two parts in my talk. And uh, first of all, I would like to uh, talk about Zhang Wenshui's story. Um, Dr. Zhang was uh, one of the important founder of Taiwan People News. Uh, after that, uh, the development of Taiwan People News will also be addressed. And uh, I will centralize a case of uh, strike news um, by printing workers um, in Taipei in 1927. And I hope you will enjoy this content for understand more the history of Taiwan during the colonial period. So, who is Jiang Wei Shui? Huh? <laughs> um, he was born in 1891 in Yilan, which is a small county in northeast side of Taiwan. And uh, his father was uh, just a um, future tailor, and uh, his family was not very rich. And uh, there was a dramatic change in uh, when he was four years old in 1895, um, as you know, after the end of the uh, Sino-Japanese war, uh, Qing government ceded uh, Penghu Island and the Taiwan Island uh, to Japan. Uh, this caused uh, many Taiwanese people to rise up in opposition. And um, so Mr. Zhang, was uh, studying in traditional uh, Chinese system uh, in the private school. And uh, so until he was 16, he finally uh, enrolled in uh, in uh, official primary school. And after that, um, in here, I think, uh, yeah. Um, uh, he was learning very fast and uh, well, uh, and also realized the importance of the modern education, the importance of the modern education. And in 1910, he was admitted to the government uh, school of medicine in Taipei with the first grade. And uh, after five years study, he successfully graduated uh, with the second place in the class in 1950. And, uh, it, and he had an internship uh, in a public hospital in Milan. Uh, so he back to his country 
and in nine uh, in nineteen I think in nineteen fifteen. And uh, yeah, I would like to show the picture. This is um the the governor of uh, governor school of medicine in Taipei. Uh, they changed the name to uh, uh, Tai uh, Taipei Yi Xue Xiao. And uh, I do like this photo because you can see the the uh, unlike the standing still or um, still the group picture, the photos, uh, everyone, uh, every student here, you can see that they just show their, show his personality and um, confidence. So um, it's like a, Dr. Zhang, uh, during his uh, learning time in medical school, um, he had been active in into social movements. And uh, after his uh, after his internship, uh, uh, he moved to Taipei uh, to Da Baocheng and uh, set uh, set up his own uh, hospital named Da An Yi Yuan. You might see. It. Show you the Da Yuan, the left side, you will see the sign. And um, his own hospital named Da Yuan uh, in 1916. Uh, it means when he was just 25, he specialized in internal medicine and uh, um, pediatrics. Not only a hospital, yeah. And the uh, Da Dao Chen, I would like to just a simple introduce Da Dao Chen. Uh, as for Da Dao Chen, also called Dao Jiang, uh, was an important trading port uh, in the 19th century in Taipei. Um, during the Japanese uh, occupation, Da Dao Chen uh, became a very flat flourishing. And okay, so in this video. Um, Dr. Zhang Shenchen analyzed the reason why Zhang Weishui started his career in Da Baocheng. This is a website from Zhang Weishui Foundation. And um, they made the new animation by old photos. So you can see um, Da Hospital. You will know who is here later. <laughs> so it will So now you might have the image, which the Da Dao Chen look like. And uh, let's go back to the view. So um, not only being a doctor, um, Zhang Weishui, he also bought a restaurant. Uh, named the Chunfeng De Yi Lo, uh, nearby his hospital. And uh, why he would like to buy the restaurant? Because he would like to get together more intellectuals and the businessmen uh, for supporting social movements in the future. Uh, so, so from now, you can see John Wenzhen was a doctor and the owner of the restaurant as well as uh, gradually becoming a social active during his 20s. And uh, this next one will be, uh, this one is a famous uh, clinic lecture here. He described Taiwan as a patient hmm. uh, and point out the uh, same strength of Taiwan and give a diagnosis to Taiwanese with a uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, more natural with the knowledge. So how can we cure this problem? And he gave, he suggests the prescription are taking 
formal education, and uh, not only formal education and more um, supplemental education, and also to have uh, kindergartens for the next generation and to build um, libraries for everyone. Also organize groups for reading newspapers. So, and uh, he, he's, he used the, uh, here, here, this part, uh, sorry, we cannot point out, uh, so extremely much um, uh, for at least for 20 years to change the situation of Taiwan. In other words, uh, education would be the main method to cure Taiwan's problem at that time. Oh, so um, how can... So, so how can exactly uh, ameliorate most Taiwanese people's knowledge standards? Um, they decided to establish Taiwan Culture Association. Um, the two group, local in intellectuals and the college students in Japan, um, cooperate to promote the importance of Taiwan Taiwanese consciousness and the two act many anti-colonial movements in every part of Taiwan. So uh, the most important anti-colonial uh, movement is the, the uh, petition movement for the establishment of the Taiwanese parliament. Uh, it was a uh, Quite long. This is from 20, 1923 to 1934. And even this movement took 10 years, but still failed in the end. Um, meanwhile, they thought uh, it is necessary to publish own publication to uh, pace on idea in 1920. So in 1920, uh, they firstly compiled and printed Taiwan News, Taiwan Union uh, in Tokyo. Uh, those people were helping uh, from the right side. Right side? Yeah, you can see those people were helping this publication to print and uh, deliver in Tokyo. Um, but uh, why they had chosen uh, Tokyo? not in Taiwan, uh, because since 1900, uh, um, there was a strict censorship in Taiwan. Uh, before publication, um, those contents need to be checked by Japanese government uh, in Taiwan. But then there's a two different system in Tokyo and Taiwan. So in Tokyo, it's, it's not necessary to be checked uh, the contents. So um, the chance, okay, yeah. Um, so at that time, so actually, um, Taiwan Chinian uh, is not was not many Taiwan people be uh, see at that time. Um, many people had uh, no chance to read this magazine. So after two years, uh, they like to wind up readers, uh, not only focusing on youth pe uh, young people. Um, so they changed the name of this mag magazine to uh, Formosa in 1923. Uh, the book, the Formosa, it was published uh, every ten days, and uh, in April twenty third, uh, April twenty three, and uh, almost one hundred years ago, and uh, they created this new publication. Uh, the part, the Taiwan Minbao, the Taiwan People News, as a weekly newspapers, 
at the same time with the, the Formosa population. But uh, as we know, there was a ter terrible earthquake happened in Tokyo uh, in, on 1st se September 20, uh, 1923. Um, so over 10,000 people uh, were killed in this earthquake and a large numbers of the houses were burned and destroyed, even the printing plants. So it's not very, not it was not going well during that time. So they published these two publications, but it's, it's very hard for them. So they decide to cancel the Formosa, just publish uh, Taiwan People News. So that it was it was a very bad time. So yeah, to that. So in the end, only the Taiwan People News uh, keep printed, but uh, finally the. Taiwan People News was allowed to be printed in Taiwan in um, actually in you would go back to see. Um, so before the July 1923, um, Taiwan People News was printed in Tokyo. So after that, uh, it was allowed to uh, to be printed in Taiwan uh, by 18 Japanese uh, version. So they can print it in Taiwan. So um, here, go back to see the, uh, here. Uh, okay, so then, so in uh, 20, uh, 1925, the, the uh, circulation was over 1,000, uh, 10,000 actually, 10,000, 10,000 for the, in uh, Taiwan and without supporting by Japanese government. And you can see this one is a uh, kind of um, memory, uh, the circulation uh, going high and uh, a ratio carrying the Taiwan people news. And uh, as you can see, it's not easy for just print printing uh, daily uh, newspapers at that time. Um, delivery is another problem at that time. So, <laughs> but um, another reason why I like this photo because it also shows uh, different generation uh, to I think a uh, join join to know uh, these newspapers. Okay. So you can see kids, young people, adults, and the workers here. And as I mentioned just now, um, so this one will be the they were many groups of um, newspaper newspaper reading, uh, especially it's um, um, in order to share more ideas and the knowledge to people who were unable to read and write. And uh, those events uh, made the Taiwan People News more uh, influent. Also, there are um, some people we might ignore, all printing workers. And um, we usually see publications and the printing products. Um, but uh, oh, we might forget um, printing workers' efforts here. Uh, there is uh, one reason why I would like to trace back uh, their history and their voices. Um, so in the next part, uh, why on strikes for printing workers in 1927 will be the, uh, the next point I would like to uh, tell. So actually before uh, 19, 1926, uh, Taiwan People News focused on counter events more and reported a few strike news from China. 
And uh, since uh, Labor Day uh, 1926, the labor movement in Taiwan has been active. Uh, the biggest one uh, and the very first one labor movement in 1927 uh, was uh, holding by uh, iron workers in Kaohsiung. And uh, it's a, the new city at the time in south of Taiwan. And um, in Taipei, um, there was a one big strike by uh, printing workers. Um, it's from here, the, the Taipei Printing Joint Stock Company, uh, located in Yamatocho. Yamatocho. Um, here, um, if I say it's Taipei Main Station, maybe you know the area just in front of Taipei Main Station. It's quite. Uh, so um, uh, the the owner, the owner, uh, Fune Bashi, and uh, he actually they are two, but I don't really uh, I don't really know their re relationship. They might relate. Um, one is uh, one was a uh, mining boss mm -hmm. owner, and he owned. Uh, uh, big mine, uh, miner in Taipei. And uh, another one I just find that he, he's intro introduced. Uh, he was a uh, uh, Iron Hardwell tra trading owner in Kaohsiung. And he became a uh, city, cities, I forgot, yeah, yeah, in Kaohsiung after that. And uh, so, okay. So that is the report from Taiwan newspaper according to the issue um, 160, 164, and 166 issues. So, uh, according to the report, they say uh, the Funabashi boss was very demanding because <laughs> he was um, he was manager of the uh, miner mm -hmm. for miners, so they treat them the printing workers very bad. He asked workers to work overtime during busy period, but uh, dismissed them in not busy. So that's the reason why, and they would like to. Uh, Fight. They would like to fight. So the workers' requirement uh, was um, must inform workers two months in advance before admission, and they must pay two months wages when the workers are <laughs> <laughs> just like now. And um, um, it's a, it, at the beginning it was very easy requirement, but the boss make it bigger. Uh, um, June 21st, and uh, Funabashi was also a leader of the Taipei Printing Association. So he connected with other owners to deal with this strike. So it's kind of shared responsibility <laughs> to other owners. And uh, so they hold, a, they hold a meeting and they had a terrible response to making uh, their working condition worse. So they gave, gave them many conditions, but it's not good for uh, workers. So during, uh, so yeah, this part. And during 23rd to 13th uh, June, after the workers meeting, they required, required, required several benefits and the lips clear. However, those owners reject all. And uh, so they designed it's the formal strike started on 3rd of uh, July. Uh, so the from this report you can see uh, it shows you know, those workers speaking rights. Not only this, uh, 
actually, um, at that uh, at the same time, uh, other owner just um, like they from different industry, um, they they show they show their sympathy for strikes. So would like to help to transfer. Uh, they would like to help the uh, workers. So uh, you can see over two hundred workers uh, helping to transport sand and soil soil from the Danche River because uh, another owner uh, gave them a chance to work. So <laughs> in this photo, you can see they they are doing other job, but it's harder. But the nice pay as well, so they jump in to another work. So um, according to the report, uh, some of them workers, uh, they 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 was doing uh, they was uh, they was doing uh, they was doing uh, selling food goods at that time and not doing. Printing anymore. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, it's not a resort or it's not a conclusion uh, so far. It's just my thinking. It's a it's kind of tips for solution. It's not a radical, and yes, it's no one was dismissed after this strike. But uh, according to the report, uh, the workers obtained less wages and a vocation. It's a uh, the 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 end of the result of strike in 1927, 1927, and after that, during 1930 to 1931, it became a bigger and a longer strike uh, by printing workers in Taiwan. So not just North side, not in Taipei, it become the bigger. And uh, that is the uh, next step I'm going to analyze. What's the impacts after, uh, during this, during this strikes by printing workers and what are the impacts so I would like to show you this one. This is a report. They say, oh, finally uh, solve this problem. And uh, the special part I would like to show you here. Yeah, yes, you can see here. Uh, this part we cannot see clear because this is uh, after censorship. They just would like Cancel the the part. It's anti-government or anti. It's not good for uh, government or owners. They just cancel this this part. It's a special part to understand. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Uh, thank you for listening. Yeah. Thank you. Move to okay. Bye. Bye. So, okay. Oh, very, very... Sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, after uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Xu's introduction on the Taiwan story, the Japanese story of time, I will follow to the post-war period from actually it's, uh, not the year of the, the bigger later I will introduce Ami Maosun, but uh, I will focus on the period of 1945 to 1947. Yeah, so yeah, that's the topic. Uh, sorry, for fifties, yeah. Extension. So that's what I'm going to talk about for today's talk. First, I will introduce the chronological in the early post of Taiwan and the argumentum of the early post of Taiwan, what they're going, putting on the discourse, or especially the political discourse. 
and later introduce the emergence of uh, publication issues, which could be considered the emergence of the just Dr. She just introduced about the, the press uh, in the 1920s, where it is called, called Anglo Civil Society, and later introduce my uh, publication to take in Bao, people's news. Yeah, and I'm in Bao, so, and it's called Founder in Bao. So, first of all, I'll briefly introduce what happened after 1945. As you already know, that uh, the August 15, 1945, is the surrender or capitulation of the Japanese Empire, empire at the end of the Sino Japan War. And later, on um, October 25th, this week, called the uh, Declaration Day of the Resuscitation of Taiwan, as well as also the Pongu Pesatores to the Chinese Republic. So, there's a, actually a transition of powers uh, happening in Taiwan. And later, I mean, that's very, that's for me, at least for me, that's interesting. It's like in the year 1946, uh, China, uh, the Chinese nationalist regime, with the so called uh, the Zheng for the Chinese, uh, the Re Chinese Republic, is not actually uh, authoritarian, but having a like, democratic experiment, at least in Taiwan. So they have the uh, uh, local elections, for election for local representatives. Like, so as you can see, in uh, starting from Later, I introduce how, how uh, there are many layers like local elections. Because the, on December 25th, they have been declared, they have to put the Chinese constitution on practice in late, later 1947. So that's actually like, uh, you know, uh, after the civil war, uh, yeah, the, from John Keshek and the other mil mil military wars, and later the Sino Japan war, they finally realized, okay, that's maybe the high time we should put. Our constitution into practice and, and the whole China, China and also including Taiwan. So they came this Taiwan intercession as an experiment of democracy, at least local democracy. But unfortunately, yeah, because like uh, economic inflation, it's also the problem scandals and corruptions, the uh, disappear were for uh, unsatisfied with the, this, this regime, at least. The, the February 28th incident hurt. Uh, so there's outbreaks there. So there are, but uh, coming with this riot, what I can call the riot, riot or the Iron One riot, comes with the military suppression from the Chinese national regime. So that's what we like the March 8th, the Chinese army landing on Keelong, I mean, north of Taiwan, to the squandering of the riots. So after that, on May 20th, 1949, is the realization of the martial law of the Chinese Republic. Because at the time, we will not like, have to, the Chinese national have to deal with the, the Chinese communists. So later, like uh, in 1949, December 7th, that's the retreat of the Chinese nationals to Taiwan because of the defeat of the civil war in the uh, China. And in the year 1950, is uh, because of the outbreak of the Korean War and the following statement of US President Harry Truman. Say, uh, concerning this undetermined status of the status quo of Taiwan. So that's the basic scenario happening in Taiwan, not in Taiwan, but also in the whole East Asia. Asia. So what they are talking about uh, in the, during this period of 1945 to 1950 uh, is, first one is uh, uh, during that uh, Japanese colonial time, the Taiwanese, Taiwanese people are concerned as subject, they are subject of the colonial period. So, and um, they have to re uh, reclaim their citizenship, somehow their citizenship. So it's how they have to be de uh, Japanization and also the re syndicalization of these people. That's the first issue, because of the ethnic issue. And the second is I'll just talk about the experimental thing of democracy or local autonomy through the public uh, election. So first is like the February to March, that's the township. And later come with the bureau and the villages, and it's, it's the larger of the county, or then later it's the provin provincial council members. Yeah, there are like layers, uh, upgrading layers of the local elections. And, and the last is the, I will call it reemergence of the, the civil society or the public sphere, just like uh, during the, the 1930s, not only in Taiwan, also in China and Japan, or also in Europe. And so, uh, there's a like seizure of the press freedom, but the, after like uh, after the war, the 1940s, the uh, like, like Taiwanese intellectual elite, so I'm trying to bring back to the, uh, the public discourse into the society. So there are many publications and issues. 
all of those are the Chinese. Yeah. So I was just trying to find the story of this, like uh, according to some research, there are about 40 to 50 magazine issues story this post early post war period. And you can see this uh covers of these magazines. Uh there are like the okay, the liberalist, the socialist, and also some culturalists, as you can see. And there are many perspectives, I can say, is uh, by Hua Qifang, or like the blues of the, the magazines. Yeah. So you can see the reds and the blues, and you can probably guess what perspective they are taking. So I will introduce some um, about the people news. Uh, it's like very short, uh, short appearing, appearing of this issue. It's probably you know, 1945 to 1947. And probably can see that basically following the, the end of the war and the, also the outbreak of the February 28th incident. Uh, as a co-founder is the, the Limousin, Limousin or Limousin in, in Taiwanese. So he was born in 1987, uh, 1887. 1887, 80, 87, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Sorry, bye bye. So 1947, yeah, it's coming right now. Sorry. And what is the stance of the Min Okay, it is liberal and it's pro Chinese nationalist because it uh, before the 1947 gets a lot of gave a lot of faces about the, the new coming regime. And in the meanwhile, the, the, this Min Bao called for the local autonomy, implementation, and the high civil participation in the sphere. To encourage people, okay, you should uh, focus on what is happening in our society. And there's coming elect local elections, you should take some rules, some roles in it. So, okay, talking about this co founder, Lee Mao I just keep it short, okay? Okay, he got his uh, master in the, at the Tokyo, in the Tokyo Imperial University, and his topic is on Miami, Yang yeah. Uh, Chinese, so, so he does he got his master and he got his PhD at Columbia University, which is in New, New York. And his dissertation topic is about the public education for both under the Japanese administration, which is uh, published in 1929. So he's then he studied under the supervision of the American pragmatism of uh, Paul Monroe and uh, John Dewey. And this picture, so I, mean, I just got from the internet, it's not, one, it's not one I've taken. And it's, uh, it is carved on the Riverside Church, which is also in New York, just near Columbia University. And as I was told on the secondary literature, is that uh, the mouse as a student there, they, they were invited by the, the priest, I think it's the priest, uh, to leave their calligraphy on the, on the windows in the church. So he left Mandarin or Chinese characters, some of these like all these libra, so on, on, the, on, the, on the fence, on the window there. Yeah. So, yeah, you there. So, some, I know some visitors, Taiwanese visitors, uh, come to uh, visit there for taking photos and videos. So you can check on YouTube if you like. Yeah. So, that is basic uh, educational background. So, and he also talking about his uh, social engagement and he has his roles in academics, for example, he was the Dean of Academic Affairs of the Tainan Presbyterian Middle School, which is a Christian school. And, and that is for the religious or church part, and for the state part, a little more, he is the director of German and English teaching and library affairs at the Tainan High Technology School, which is known that the National Temple University. Yeah, that's the top technician Schumann. And okay, so he knows German better than I do. And he and he's been also that's the after the religious or the church or the state part. He's, he's also active in the role in just as I just mentioned the Taiwan Cultural or Cultural, uh, Cultural Association, Taiwan Hua Xi Hui, promoting the cultivation of the Chinese people or in some sense enlightenment of the yeah, so uh, this is the that's the mouse. Yeah, he's wearing Japanese clothes, so he has more, also multiple identities. He was in some views uh, like this one. He used okay, the Western style, and this is the Japanese style. Also, yeah, he used kind of tra uh, Chinese traditional style. Yeah, so that's him. So that is his engagement in the in the pre-war or pre-second war Taiwan, and the post-war. Yeah, the the war. Chinese one, yeah, the, 
He became the professor and the interim dean of the liberal arts college, which is the National Taipei University. But uh, this Taipei University is not the Taipei University nowadays. It's a Taiwan National Taiwan University here. Because in the during the Japanese colonial, colonial time, this university is the Taihoku University. So it's Taipei, uh, yeah, I mean, in Japanese. But so up in the during this intercession time, they call they name it as Taipei. National Taiwan University, but later become National Taiwan University. So that's the difference you should, you should notice. So he was become the dean in the, well, temporarily. And also he was the co-founder of the director of the Taipei Field News. Because not only in the academic institutions, also in the society you want to raise the knowledge and the consciousness of the Taiwanese people. Well, so hard to say. And during this incident, this silent incident on February 28th, uh, he was uh, picking up by some local elites and also the Chinese nationalists from mainland China. He should be a uh, uh, negotiator how to solve this riot issue at the time. At the time. But um, it was planned. Yeah. So um, on March 10th or 11th in the, in the midnight, uh, Lima Ozen was taken by armed agents because if someone knocking on the door and said, hey, we should talk about this, we should be having some coffee. And he was disappeared, sadly. Oh. Yeah, we don't know that what happened either. Um, yeah, he disappeared. So, yeah. So, the emotion. So, later I will introduce from the news clips introducing about the attitudes or attitudes of these people. Well. So, um, for example, this is about expectation. This is the 1945, October 25th. Well, uh, the early uh, visualizations is like they have really. Uh, expectation and anticipation about this new ritualization because during the colonial times they have the, these Taiwanese people have faced the impartial um, sorry part, partial discrimination so about whether it's like social promotions or cutting your career at schools or at the, the institute so after the war and the during the ritualization they expected an impartial recruitment just like we know that for the Taiwanese people when you want to have fun uh, work or job in the in the, the public sector or in the, in the enterprises they want to say there's no discrimination uh, from uh, the Chinese people or from uh, say, the Chinese people. And second is like you know, talking about re Chinese nation or signification because they at the time the uh, only some elite people can can really speak good, good Mandarin Chinese you know, mostly Taiwanese or even Japanese. So they asked the, like they should introduce the, the government should introduce more school teachers, to, yeah, from mainland China, to give the people to opportunity to learn the Mandarin Chinese, Chinese, and then there's the cooperation between the local citizenship citizens in Taiwan and the police officers from China because during the as a previous experience, the, the Chinese people had very bad experience with the Japanese. For this office, you've ever seen the, the movies or the novels are talking about these issues, trying to talk about things. And the last is coping at the time because there's like uh, a post war period or post catastrophic period is always like having issues with economic inflations because things in terms of depressions. Yeah. So they want a government uh, as putting those items to solve in our recession times. Uh, second, this also published in the 1947, but in October 20th, is like how to pick up this organization building issues in Taiwan, also in Taiwan, uh, just following their uh, Chinese uh, compatriots, or say Chinese uh, elites, is like, well, these liberals, uh, Chinese nationalists, it's, it's, it's like putting the three principles. The people, also the song, also known as the Sanya Sanzi ideology, as the guide of the national spirit. And, and also on this article, it says having to analyze about the decline of the communist wings in China and Taiwan. That's interesting because we know what happened later, right? So it says, so there's actually taking a Chinese nationalist perspective to rebuild Taiwan. So after it's also later on November 6th, talking about, okay, when we're talking about speech freedom, 
So this is the author I just put in addition about this intellectual Yang Yunping. Yeah, Yang Yunping is an uh, intellectual literati and culturalist who put emphasis on the importance of literature and historical documents relevant to Taiwanese Tao, Tao studies. Um, actually, he, he after, during the resuscitation in early 1945, he also put emphasis like uh, there are many documents in the uh, Taiwan governor's office, and there are many documents recording like anthropological or political or social studies on Taiwan from the Japanese perspective, of course. And he was, although Jiang Yunping was a very inclined to Chinese nationalist, but he also considered those Japanese colonial heritage to work from literature should, document, should be archived. So late, that's that's profitable for us for historical studies not late. And that's him, that's Yang Yunping. But he also comes, that's his uh, public uh, critique about first about the the validity of the banning speech, good speech, should be also rendered to a good public discussion. Because during the Japanese colonial time, period, especially in the 1930s, as he concerned, is that the suppression of uh, speech freedom also hindered the social development now in Taiwan or in Japan. So that's also caused the bad effects on, on politics, especially. And he ascribed to that is uh, that is the defeat or failure of the empire. So that's that's him, the young Yuping, his uh, comment, social comment on this empire. And later, also back to Limao uh, on November 18, 1945, he's talking about resettling the diasporic Taiwanese people in Japan and its previous occupied areas because they are like as probably go wandering Taiwanese people, you know, like in Manzhou or in, in Japan, then after 40, 90, 1945, they should, uh, the government should take some measures to bring back those Taiwanese, so otherwise they will be diasporic, um, so it's like a settled. Also concerning the issue of citizenship. Uh, later, that's the top of gun. Again, sorry, again, talking about the speech freedom on December 28th, 1945. It says that's another like reputation about speech, speech freedom should be considered as one of the funda foundations of this the constituted state, which is state of constitutionalism. And so, also, again, they're talking about the hindrance of public speech or speech freedom in um, during regimes should could be ascribed to the defeat concerning the experience in Japan and Germany. And then is the 1946 February 7th, talking about the constitutionalism, because at the time that the, also in the, the Chinese nationalists and also the Chinese elite were discussing how to implement the China, the constitution of China. Um, so they're talking about the, the Wu Xianzao, the draft the act of this thing uh, in the constitution national assembly uh, moving that way. And so as even though they're like Taiwan society uh, can become a little bit marginal in the Chinese Republic, they're still fighting over how we got a, should got more engagement or involvement in the uh, Republic. Okay, about also the public repeating on the press freedom. And this is more of a specific Case because in the around February 14 or earlier in the year 1946, uh, at which is like the eastern coast, eastern city of Taiwan, there is a scandal or corruption on the rice. Yeah, because the, the price of the, the price of rice getting higher and as inflation and some issue with the public view because like sugar and the rice are like monetized by the government bureaus, the government sectors. And there's like uh, officials corruption or bribery about controlling the price. So that's, a, that's the same goes, uh, scandal. Some other newspaper want to unfile, reveal this scandal. But of course it was like putting silence, we should not talk about this. That is against the government. So, Minbao at this article issue issue that uh, the freedom of speech and the press should be uh, in a healthy development and talking about this issue should 
uh, well, you can say talking about the elephant in the room should be um, in a pro should be a progress. But in reality, the government press down this this issue. We should not talk about this. So, so that is not healthy. So this Mingbao this uh, commentary is talking about we should have better freedom to talk about this to make the society better. So as you can see, uh, on economic and social side, uh, uh, the problem cannot be solved. And on the political side, uh, the constraint of the press freedom, the speech freedom, still go, still still went. So that's uh, 1946, September 13, that's starting discontent or dissatisfaction with the government. As it, because I see that's uh, only from the Huali, that's an eastern city in Taiwan, just a city. But this problem um, getting worse. So like it become like a whole Taiwanese issue. It's uh, inflation, depressed, economic depression, and also uh, sorry to say this, so suicide cases. But uh, this Mingbao, they consider that as the voice of the Taiwanese people, they should, we should talk about this, no, we should talk about this. So there are many problems now. So you can see that there's, uh, they call it uh, Taiwan's uh, way being Thai, August, uh, pathological report on Taiwanese society. There are many issues for after the war. So we should talk about this, like the life, steel, and public corruption, and uh, says entertainment only favors some certain class. You probably can know what happens. And we use this word, uh, means like only the rich people can get what they want, and uh, the average cannot, only the, the staffing and dying on the streets. Yeah, that becomes the, uh, maybe something a little familiar now. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, that's 1946, September. And we know what happened uh, 1947, probably 20. Uh, that's the just I mean, also in Dallas, and there's a very, I would say that's a very uh, conflict between the the statesman and the, the citizen considering uh, trafficking cigarettes. But uh, they become more and more intense on violence and liars and people are coming with the discontent with the expression up toward the government. And then it's the riot. Um, we know what happened later in the March. The military came to squatting the whole Taiwan. But you can see this is actually the last issue of the Mingbao. He said, Songti Mingbao seems like reasserting the spirit or the motives of the Mingbao. What is the motto of the Mingbao? The first, again, under the Chinese nationalist framework, it says, okay, we should reassert in the Senyas and the ideology of liberalism and national uh, to provide a healthy national spirit. That's the scenario of the data. And under this framework is the advocacy of the interests of the Chinese people. We should talk about what we are that uh, challenge or um, dilemmas of what we are the Chinese society are facing. And we should take care of the interests of people. Yeah, that's news. And last, speech freedom. That's the standing and speaking point for freedoms and rights. You should speak the one you're seeking for. Yeah, that's the basic three things of the Mingbao. So, in short remarks, that uh, from the 1945 to 1947, we can say probably 1950 before the Cold War, you know, there's very drastic or dramatic social transformation from. Um, okay, so called Japanese authoritarian regime to the Chinese Republic. Well, then, at, the, at least at that time, it was very uh, democratic, most experimental, but after 47 or 50, it becomes a non authoritarian regime. Yeah, that's, that's the between time. And we can call the blossom or emergence of publication issues, uh, talking about the civil society or public. Somehow still consolidating the concepts of the Taiwanese society become like okay, we are the Taiwanese people, yeah, not, not just not only a subject, but more like an entity or social identity, not political. Uh, so uh people use what mean Bao, we should be taking one of the examples to uh, speech and press freedom in at least but uh, in a liberal perspective, liberalist band. Um 
comparing to other like socialist or like even stronger Taiwanese nationalist perspective, uh, the stance or perspective of top people news is rather milder because it's talking about uh, only the local autonomy and uh, well, overall civil, uh, civil participation. But even though it is, it doesn't, it doesn't give really harsh critique that we should turn off, uh, turn down the government or something. It still got damaged, and the power of this uh, co-founder and most of us may disappear. Yeah, that is the story about May 25, 1987, and our story made on the And thank you for your attention.